So today we are going to start off with the fourth module, uh, which is uh, filters and IC regulators. And here we are looking at uh, um, two sections. One is filters and the other one is IC regulators. So, so firstly, we will discuss about filters and then we will move on to IC regulators. So as you all know, you know, these filters are circuits that pass only a certain range of signal frequencies. So if it is, you know, something which goes beyond the range of those frequencies, it doesn't allow. So it's it's as good as, you know, just like a gate. So you have designed a gate and uh, people will be allowed only through that gate. They will not be allowed through any other uh, passages because there's no entrance at all. So the entrance and exit is possible only through the gate. Now you decide how big the gate is going to be how much width that you're going to give to the gate right so all that depends on your decision as a designer right so that's where you know this concept comes in where it uh, kicks in uh, the unwanted frequencies so this property of filters is also called frequency selectivity so i want you to make a note of this right so indirectly i could ask a question uh, mentioning that what is meant by frequency selectivity so these one, two three lines can be your answer fine so there are two broad categories uh, one is going to be the analog type and the other one is going to be digital type so as we all know analog refers to you know the uh, time based signals right so when i say time based signals uh, it is you know i can get values at every instant of time right so that's the importance of an analog filter but then in digital of course it's making a life more simpler but then digital you know i cannot probably have uh, you know between one point to another point so there's going to be a small gap in between right so but then with the analog form it's going to be a continuous signal right so if my waveform is going to be like this right i know that every at every instant of time even if i uh, you know break up this into small pieces right so even if i want information at this point right so it is possible okay or maybe i want the information at this point it is possible i want the information at this point with respect to time it's all possible but then when i go with digital signals right so it's going to be like this Okay, so if I want you know something, uh, then you know it it becomes a, a gap between right. So I cannot exactly model them here, right? So so it will be like this here, and then like this. So these are at discrete times, which is you know not uh, the continuous signal. So you know that's one advantage that we have with uh, the analog filter okay right the next one you know that we'll be looking into is digital as i told you these are discrete signals right so when i say discrete it means um, it is not continuous as um, analog signals right so these filters are classified based on the band of frequencies they pass so based on this frequencies they pass right so they are allocated in four categories right so these are the major four categories that we usually see low pass high pass band pass notch sometimes right this stop this stop band filter or um, you know band stop filter sometimes it is called uh, notch filter so all these are referring to the same filters right so keep this in mind okay so the next one you know that we'll be looking into is um, active filters and passive filters so these are the two types of uh, categories again that we have so passive filters are uh, you know using only resistors capacitors and inductors nothing else right so those are the only major things that they are using capacitors inductors and resistors so which means you know there is it needs the help of someone else to amplify to you know pass signals from one end to the other so it's it's kind of dependent okay so when you talk about uh, active filters right these uses amplifiers and not only amplifiers 
it adds up to all those components that you are using in passive filters. So passive plus amplifying. So that gives you an upgraded version and that's called active filters, right? Now analysis of filters can be um, a little complex, right? But this operation, uh, you know, can mostly be used, okay? And uh, it can be readily understood and simple design techniques are available. So even though the uh, filter, the concepts involved in filter is very much, you know, uh, kind of complicated, but then as you keep designing, as you keep getting down to resistors, capacitors, and inductors, you know, you will enjoy how these filters are designed. And once you see the waveforms, you know, that's when you start realizing, you know, the beauty of designing and how these resistors and capacitors are exclusively used. Now, if I have to vary the property of any resistor, you know, um, or if I have to vary the property of any um, waveform, then I can actually change the value of resistor and capacitor. So we have seen this exclusively in our previous modules. Now, uh, filter types and characteristics. Now, based on, you know, gain and frequency, even that we can classify. So they are nothing but called gain versus frequency plot. Okay. So this uh, signal frequency is plotted to a log scale, okay? So when I say a log scale, so it means, you know, it, it has a different kind of a graph, not the normal graph that you guys use, right? So signal frequency F versus uh, logarithmic scale and voltage gain. So that's going to be AV is equal to output by input and that's going to be dB. So I think you would have heard minus 3 dB, 20 dB, 40 dB, 60 dB, minus 60 dB. So all these are actually referring to filter types and its characteristics. So based on the gain and frequency, okay? Based on the materials, their materials used, they are active and passive. Based on the pass band, it is low pass, high pass, band pass, and band stop, right? So these are the types of... Um, things or variations that we have with respect to filters. Now here you can see uh, the responses, right? Uh, analog signal responses. So we usually want our signal to be, you know, accurate. Okay, we do not want this kind of, uh, uh, you know, slope. Okay, but then we want it to be as fine as possible. So you now in fact, this should have dropped in at this point exactly okay if we are talking of ideal filters okay at this point it should be dropping and uh, you know we should be having in this form but then you can see that there is a slight deviation right at uh, you know the portions where it's actually turning around right so you can see that that difference is actually happening here and you can see that the difference is actually more here so why are these differences? Because as you all know, theory and practical, they vary a lot, right? So once you start getting things into practical purpose, right, practical usage, it doesn't work out well as planned. Um, you know, you can think of the example of the service providers, you know, they, they probably, you know, tell you that you will get about um, one GBPS when you're stationary, when you're using a 4G network. Are we getting those speeds? I don't think so, right? So we are looking at you know changes or you know uh, practical issues here right so instead of having a curve you know as i've mentioned in red um, you know you're getting a curve which is in blue right so this is you know how it is between the theoretical values and the practical values right okay so yeah so let's move on and this summarizes okay what is your low pass high pass band stop and band pass filter okay so here you can see um, in uh, pass band you know there's something called pass band and stop band so ultimately you are looking at only passing and stopping based on what frequency you're stopping based on what frequency you're enabling so that decides or that gives the name of the filter so if you are passing the lower end frequency, okay, then it is called a pass band, okay? So if, if you are using um, or if you are passing a higher frequency, 
okay then it's called a high pass filter and if you're you know just trying to stop something in between okay and only at the start and stop you want to you know pass then it becomes a band stop filter okay and you want to just pass a small region okay and that becomes your band pass filter so stopping a small region band stop stopping a range uh, or passing a range in between c1 and c2 that becomes my band pass filter so rest of the things you know it's all uh, you know when i say uh, stop right so it means that you know after the cutoff frequency the c that you are seeing here right the letter c is actually the cutoff frequency so that is actually deciding uh, when my frequencies would stop moving actually right so you can see that you know low pass and high pass are actually opposite to each other and band stop and band pass are opposite to each other okay fine now um, some properties related to passive filters okay they are made up of passive components as i mentioned resistors capacitors and inductors and inductors are usually are, are of big problem right so so we need to deal with these inductors in a proper way and uh, you know if possible if we can eliminate it it's a good thing right so there's no amplifying elements here as i mentioned uh, usually transistors and op amps help in amplifying the signals but then here no not happening right because we don't have any uh, things as that sort right we don't have a um, amplifier okay we don't have a um, transistor we don't have an op amp so nothing is going to work out uh, you know with regards to amplification but then uh, if we uh, talk of active filters right so that's when this amplification comes into picture now there are uh, different types here first order second order third order right and uh, uh, you know it's it's based on you know how much of db that you know the waveform actually falls into so in first order we will see that you know it's it's falling in 20 db and in second order it's you know 40 db and in third order is 60 db so every um, you know order the first order second order third order this a 20 db you know decline fine this uh, requires no power supplies okay and buffers amplifiers can be used and it's desirable to use inductors with high quality factors so if i am using an inductor then it should be only of high quality right i cannot use something which is of you know medium grade or low grade that will actually bring down the values that will actually uh, you know pull down the waveforms to non optimal levels now this is a big problem having an inductor right so it's having a huge size, large inductance values. Um, you know, it's it it's a lot of time consuming to actually you know tune these inductors, right? And uh, of course they are expensive. So you can think of all the bad factors, right? Uh, the size is huge, it's expensive, right? And then it's time consuming to tune, right? Uh, and uh, you know it's very difficult for you know lower frequencies so so you know all these things you know actually don't suggest that we should be using an inductor in a circuit and above all right there's a lossy factor involved in inductors which we do not want it right okay so next the best part is we have active filters okay and in active filters we are trying to employ without inductors so we are trying to solve the major problem which is <clears throat> which was caused by the inductor so we do not have an inductor next these are made up of op amps resistors and capacitors so resistors and capacitors were a combination of passive and we are you know adding op amps or probably transistors to them so that makes them active and then it also gives us gain okay and uh, they are easy to design and uh, you know we have high input impedance okay uh, we have seen that the property of an op amp right they have very high input impedance 
and this helps in preventing uh, the excessive loading of driving source. Okay. So low output impedance prevents the filter from being affected by the load. Okay. So whatever is the output, the same thing is brought out and uh, easy to adjust over a wide frequency range. No, um, you know, in uh, passive filters, we saw that for uh, lower order frequencies, right? It was difficult to tune in, uh, especially with the one kilohertz and below. But then with this active, it's making our life more simple, isn't it? Uh, we don't have inductors, the big problem guy, and uh, you know, we are even having amplification. Okay. Now, as I was telling you, right, um, based on these uh, decibels, right, we can again have first order, second order, and third order, right? So if you can see this graph here, so it's falling off at 20 dB per decade, okay? And uh, this is referring to the first order. When I say second order, it is 40 dB per decade. So it's increasing, right? So the fall, you know, it's becoming more, straight okay so here you can find that it's it's a little bit slopey but then here it's too steep and then when i go to the third order right which, which is actually 60 db per decade so there's a decline of 60 db per decade right so as the frequency increases after the cutoff frequency right you can see here you have something called cutoff frequency which is fc so after this point right so after this point is what you're going to see the decline happening. And um, all these are, uh, you know, with respect to decibels, right? So there's a huge decline compared to 20 dB and 60 dB. 60 dB has a huge decline, which means there is an instantaneous drop, okay? So let us just see a few important parameters. Uh, if in case a question is asked, how are filters uh, classified based on the fall of rate, then you know this can be your answer. So in first order, 20 dB per decade, and um, it's a single pole filter, right? Uh, and we have only one reactive component. So exit. Next, the second order filter, uh, the fall is going to be 40 dB, and then it's going to be a two pole filter, right? So you would have studied these uh, poles and uh, you know zeros in your DSP exclusively. It's a two reactive component, which means second stage. And then third order filter. So there's going to be about 60 dB per decade fall. Okay. And we're going to have three poles here and three reactive components. So you can see those components also in three stages. Okay. Now, what are the advantages of using an op-amp? As you all know, op-amp is a very ideal circuit, right? Um, in fact, it changed the way how electronics industry was looking into, um, you know, devices. So we were able to program it. We were able to increase the bandwidth. We were able to use, you know, huge frequencies. We were able to see that, um, uh, you know, huge gains. So many things actually helped us in using an OPAM. So I've listed out quite a few of them and exclusively if answers are asked based on what are the advantages, then you can list them out, right? So a few of them are, you know, uh, it's going to be reduced size and weight. Now these are active filters, which means filters involving OPAMs not only op-amps, resistors and capacitors, right? So the first and foremost thing, um, it's going to reduce the size, why? Because it's integrated, right? So it's going to reduce. The next one is um, increased reliability and improved performance. Why is that happening? Because we know that it has high input impedance and zero output impedance because of which, you know, it can vary its properties, even if we make slight changes, the design changes, um, changes in the value of resistances, capacitances. So minute changes can actually vary uh, the circuit's performance. And you can see that there's a, um, you know, huge shift in the waveform, right? Uh, next, simpler design for passive filters. 
and these can actually realize a wider range of functions as well as providing larger gain so we have seen that in large quantities the cost of ic is less than passive counterparts see initially when ic was designed by uh, you know jack kilby so you know it, it was very time consuming he had his holidays but then he didn't go home so during his holidays during the vacation semester break he thought fine let me work in the lab and probably come out with something interesting and uh, you know he came out with an ic right so initially to construct this it was very difficult and later on you know as uh, technology improved as you know intel pitched in as arm pitched in right nvidia pitched in so now these major players snapdragon pitched in qualcomm right so as these major players pitched in right so the cost of these products started becoming low because they started producing them in bulk so it's always like this when you have limited edition it's always costly but then when you produce it in bulk right it becomes cheap uh, means economical so why is it economical because you know uh, those gains on each or those profits on each ics can be distributed so which means you instead of just giving it to 10 people if i give it to about 10000 people i can easily distribute my profits to those 10000 units right so that's how you know the cost of ic came down uh, drastically okay fine now uh, the disadvantages so not only the advantages right we have a uh, slight disadvantages any any circuit that you think of right will have its own advantage and disadvantage if in case the advantage is more compared to the disadvantage then we will just go for it if there are minute disadvantages right so active filters uh, also have some disadvantages for example limited bandwidth of active devices limits the highest attainable pole frequency and therefore applications nearby so there's a limit on the bandwidth there's a limit on the frequency okay but then if we just use uh, opam uh, you know it's it's a wonder circuit but then if we combine it with something else then it becomes uh, you know uh, tied up so 100 kilohertz passive rlc filters can be used up to 500 megahertz so you know that's the maximum range that you can employ and this requires power supplies right unlike passive filters so it has increased sensitivity to variations in circuit parameters caused by environmental changes compared to passive filters so there's a huge environmental impact okay it is sensitive and then uh, requires power the frequencies are limited the bandwidth thereby is limited because the frequencies are limited for many applications particularly in voice and data communications the economic and uh, performance advantages of active rc filters outweigh disadvantages right so this is what i was mentioning to you about if in case you know the advantages are higher compared to the disadvantages we will just go for it okay and probably we'll try to upgrade it and we will try to come out with a newer circuit uh, you know which helps in uh, overcoming it and which helps in you know getting it uh, rectified okay so that's the beauty of uh, having uh, you know these electronic devices wherein you can always tweak in fine tune it and make it much better than the previous uh, version okay so these were the disadvantages right so we will move on and see how these responses are okay so these are the categories as i told you uh, based on the pass band you know type so low pass filter so you are seeing this frequencies coming in right it's allowing them and after the cutoff frequency immediately it is dropping so uh, you know ideally it should have actually dropped in here right it should have come straight the one that you are seeing as uh, dotted lines isn't it so it's going to come down but uh, because of the practical issues right so we we don't find that happening right and uh, it's going to be a slope there and with regards to high pass it's going to be the reverse all the lower frequencies are eliminated 
um, which means blocked and only these um, higher frequencies are allowed here lower frequencies are allowed and the higher frequencies after fc right is blocked here it is initially blocked right so this is your low pass and high pass filter so so the main deciding factor here is going to be the cutoff frequency which is fc right okay so similarly uh, you can see the same for band pass and band stop band stop also called as notch filters so pass band uh, they pass only the frequencies that fall between its values and uh, they just want to uh, you know stop the frequencies which are in uh, you know the extremes right so this extreme and this extreme is stopped so wherein you will have two frequencies lower cutoff frequency and upper cutoff frequency and here you want to just stop the mid, mid band and you would like to you know send in the ones at the extremes here only the middle one is sent so this is the difference between your band pass filters and stop band filter or band stop filters so this eliminates signals um, while passing the frequencies outside this band okay now the filter responses right um, it's not only that you just have one filter but then you can design many filters you would have seen this butterworth filter bezel filter shibisu filter right so uh, in your uh, digital signal processing courses so you can see that you know there are three different colors here the one in green and bold is bezel okay and the one dotted uh, you know and in purple right so that's the butterworth and should we say is you know the dark blue okay the bright blue blue so you can see that you know uh, based on different applications right based on different uh, performances based on the characteristics i i go with butterworth or bezel or probably should we say uh, you know if you can see this graph you know the butterworth and uh, bezel seems to be more stable right there are no such oscillations as you see in shebsu filter so these are the most two used the butterworth and bezel and uh, most probably you know we will uh, mostly be uh, using butterworth filters okay so that's the first priority second is bezel and then shebsu filter so here is an example of a passive filter right uh, where you can see that the input signal is given you have a resistor here okay and this is a low pass filter if i can change this resistor and capacitor if i can invert them right if i can bring the resistor here and capacitor here then it becomes a high pass filter okay so if you have a resistor immediately then it's a low pass filter so input resistor capacitor output right so this is not having any signal source this is not having any voltage here just having a resistor and capacitor okay <clears throat> now let us look deep into the low pass filter and how it actually responds so the type is uh, low pass and you can see vn vn is nothing but noise signal okay so this noise signal is having higher frequencies so usually when you have higher frequencies you find that these waveforms are packed in okay and if the frequency is low then you can see that you know see you have so many waveforms here meaning to say you have you know uh, the one rising and going low positive side negative side right you have so many here but then here you just find one wave right one wave. so this happens only when the frequency is low so here the frequency is high so this is my um, signal okay and this is my noise and output is going to be a little reduced compare or probably equivalent to the source if i have to see the frequency response right av is nothing but the voltage gain and f is the frequency okay and um, fc is nothing but the cutoff frequency so it's going to allow these bands right these frequencies and then slightly it's going to come down so this line that you see is actually an ideal response so ideal 
things are not happening here, right? So we can't expect theoretical values. So the low frequency is reproduced at the output side here with very small attenuation. That's because of the noise. Okay, so high frequency, uh, which means the unwanted signal is fully attenuated. So this region becomes unwanted for you, right? So you are interested in the first section, right? So only this section will be allowed and the rest will be rejected. We do not need it, right? So that's the property of low pass filter. So cutoff frequency is def defined as frequency uh, at which the gain is attenuated by 3 dB from its normal uh, level in pass band. So that's minus 3 dB that you always look into. Then the pass band and attenuation band is uh, as shown as in figure. So pass band and attenuation band. So, so the region which is allowed is called pass band and the region which is attenuated is called attenuation band. So pass band is from F is equal to zero to F to Fc. And the bandwidth is Fc minus zero, which means whatever is your cutoff frequency that becomes your bandwidth, right? So up till this point, students, any doubts? Is it all clear? Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Now moving on to the next type, which is high pass filter. Right? So the same thing, uh, Vs and Vn, and uh, you know we are going to get the output voltage here, um, and the attenuation band is first, unlike uh, low pass was first pass band and then attenuation, but here it's the reverse. Attenuation comes first and then pass band. Okay, so based on the frequency uh, cutoff. Right, the cutoff frequency it is decided. So the high frequency signal is reproduced at output uh, with very small attenuation. So there's going to be a very small attenuation and lower frequency signal is fully attenuated. So which means the initial part is going to be red, isn't it? It's because this is a pass filter. So only the higher frequencies are allowed next. Pass band and uh, attenuation band is uh, shown here, and uh, <clears throat> the pass band is from FC to upper cutoff frequency, which means from the cutoff frequency to the higher limit of frequency. So that's going to be your bandwidth or pass band. Okay, now passive filter and how are its frequency responses? So we have seen the input signal, resistor, capacitor, output voltage, right? Now, this is the zero dB line and this is minus three dB. Why do we take this minus three dB? Because that's when, you know, we actually get constant values, stable values. So gain is 20 log output by input. So this is my pass band, stop band, right? And slope is minus 20 dB per decade. So as the frequency keeps on increasing, the you know, slope starts increasing. So if you can see the uh, phase diagram, right? So from zero minus 45 to minus 90 degree. So this is the response of a passive filter. So remember, these are not active filters, right? Which means they do not have any uh, transistors or op-amps with them. Okay, so the same uh, thing is here. So this is going to be the bandwidth and the output. Okay, output is nothing but input into Xc. Okay, that is with respect to capacitance divided by square root of R square plus Xc square. So this is capacitive reactance. So if I have to put this, then that becomes my Z. Okay, input reactance. R square plus Xc square. So we will be using this for our problem. And uh, one more important thing here is, yeah, so this formula is important, right? And uh, pass band is here and stop band is here. Fine. Frequency and it's a log scale. Okay, good. 
now you know we are getting into active low pass filter so this is the new thing getting added here right r was there c also was there output voltage was there input voltage was there but then we didn't have the open okay so this is a unity gain amplifier so inputs and outputs are going to be the same and uh, because of the speciality of able to vary the values of r and c right so i can change how this op amp is going to respond okay uh, when i say how it's going to respond it means you know i can make the waveforms go high i can make the waveforms go low or probably have a lot of gain or probably reduced gain something like that right okay so the first order uh, passive active filter consists of uh, rc filter stage providing low frequency path to the input and uh, this is a non inverting configuration right input is given to the plus terminal the amplifier is configured as voltage follower right why do we call it as voltage follower because it's a unity gain amplifier and the outputs are equal to input so whatever inputs are given the same thing up appears here at the non inverting and you know it's a kind of negative feedback here it's a negative feedback okay so the dc gain of 1 and ev is equal to plus 1 or unity gain as opposed to previous passes uh, so with this circuit alone with only r and c we were not able to achieve it but then with including the op-amp, we are able to achieve the unity gain. Okay. So the advantage of this configuration is that the op-amp's high input impedance prevents excessive loading on the filter's output, while low output impedance prevents the filter's cutoff frequency point from being affected. So here is an important factor why we are using uh, op-amp and what in what way it's helping the circuit right so by having low output impedance what is happening it is not affecting the cutoff frequency that is one thing and by having high input impedance uh, you know the excessive load on the filter output is reduced okay load is reduced at the input side and at the output side it's not varying the fc right the cutoff frequency is not at all varied so these things to be kept in mind right while you are answering the question while this configuration provides good stability to the filter uh, its disadvantage is that no voltage gain above one so as we saw limited frequency limited bandwidth few quite a few uh, disadvantages along with uh, the filter you know that we are going to add so we have to go with uh, you know little bit of disadvantages compared to you know enormous advantages so however although the voltage gain is unity the power gain is very high right so this is needed uh, the power gain is very high as its output impedance is much low than the input impedance if the voltage gain uh, greater than one is required we can use the following filter circuit so i am going to show another circuit where you know we are going to have um, small changes okay and uh, uh, trying to make it more than one right so what are we doing here instead of having a straight line getting connected to the negative terminal i am connecting it through a resistor why am i doing this so that i'll be able to configure r1 and r2 right so initially you see this just a straight wire that gets connected and there's no resistor connected with respect to op-amp but then here you have both r1 and r2 and i can configure them and i can vary and uh, if i want my output to be higher so you can see these signals here right it's of the same size the input signal and the output signal and here you can see the input signal is small and the output signal is large so which means i have made it much larger so my gain is very much dependent on the resistors alone okay so this becomes an important factor for me so dc gain please note down this dc gain is equal to one plus r2 by r1 so r2 by r1 so if i can change the values of these 
then my gain is also going to change. Why is it uh, one plus? Because it's a unity gain. So unity gain plus whatever is you know the the factor or you know the the division value between R two and R one. So it adds up to one. If I want more than one, okay. So how are uh, the waveforms going to change, right? I'm going to have a low pass filter stage here. Lower frequencies are coming. Amplification is happening here. And the gain is AV, right? And I'm going to have an output voltage, which is much higher than the input signal, R1 and R2. So 20 dB. And uh, this is a first order, as I mentioned, right? You have just one resistance here. When I see second order, another resistance will come in. So here, twenty at twenty dB, right? right uh, which means there's going to be a slope of twenty dB, right? So this is a frequency response. Okay, and uh, these are some of the uh, equations that you need to know. So the gain is nothing but output by input. So the feedback gain, okay, or we can even call it as AV, one plus. F by Fc square. So F is the frequency and Fc is the cutoff frequency, the whole square. And this is the whole square root. <clears throat> so AF is nothing but the pass band gain okay, of the filter. And this is dependent on 1 plus R2 by R1. We saw this, isn't it? And F is the frequency, and that's in hertz. Cutoff frequency, that's also in hertz. Right? There are quite a few. Um, you know, cases here. If the frequency is less than Fc, what happens? Equal to Fc, what happens? Greater than Fc. So you can see a common factor here, which is Fc, the cutoff frequency. So everything is dependent on the cutoff frequency. If it increases, decreases, equal to what's going to happen. So when it's less than, then it's going to be output by input, and that's approximately AF, right? So what is AF here? Pass band gain of the filter, and that is one plus R two by R one. If it is equal to Fc, then AF divided by root two. So we know, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be one by root two is 0 0.707. Root two is 1.414, right? So one by root two is going to give me this value. Fine. Then uh, high frequencies, then it, it's output by input, but then you know this is going to be less than AF. Okay. So whatever AF that you have designed, one plus R two by R one. So at very high frequencies, it's going to change. So this is how you know the operation of low pass active filter can be varied from the frequency gain equation. Okay, so AF, how AF can be changed? Ultimately, AF is dependent on R2 by R1. So in our upcoming sessions, right, we will see an example and we will see how to make use of these equations.